today, I take you to a rather unique place. A place where you can have fun from the top of volcanic mountains to deep into the ocean with fishes. A territory with some of the most beautiful wet forests, but also with many very dry regions. A town where you can escape to the most beautiful botanical garden in the world. Or let yourself be amazed by all that the city has to offer you, like this delectable blade, for example. Or that one. All along a nation that never sleeps. You will have fun days and nights. And what if I told you that all that happened on an island right in the middle of Pacific Ocean? Welcome to Hawaii on Hawaii Island. Let's make things clear with some statistics. Hawaii is a 137 highlands archipelago with a total area of 16,635 square kilometers, which make it a little smaller than Eswatini, a small country between South Africa and Mozambique. Among these islands, we find the eight main ones. The biggest island is Hawaii, better known as Big Island. We then find Maui, Hoa'u, Kauai, Molokai, Lanai, Niniau, and Kao Holawi. If that can give you an idea, the other islands look a little bit like that. It's so negligible that we will not talk about it today. A total of 1,360,000 people live on these islands. The most populous one is Oahu, with 70% of the population. The least populous one is Kao Holawi, because it's simply inhabited for the simple reason that it was used as a target for several explosives in World War II and that there is still today some bomb that doesn't have explode yet. Did you know that Pearl Harbor is in Hawaii? Finally, Niniao is hardly more populous with its 170 people. By the way, I'm sorry about the way I pronounce those names. The Hawaiian language has the peculiarity of having only 12 letters. The vowels A, E, I, O, U, and the consonants H, K, L, M, N, P, and W. And there is the apostrophe, which create a kind of pose in the word, like in Hoao. Otherwise, it will be like Wahoo. So with so few letters, it's not that sounds are difficult to pronounce with our mouth, but we never put so many vowels in our words. They are saying every letters, one after the other, in a word. And sure things, we never put so many times the same vowel following each other. For example, I visited Kahahawa region. Do you realize? ka ha ha wa Two-thirds of the word is composed with the letter H. Can you pronounce it better than I? Lokumai maluia. Loko wai maluia. Wai maluia. Wai maluia. Loko mai malu. Loko, loko waimaluya. The most difficult thing about this language is that almost all street names are in Hawaiian. We end up recognize the street we often use, but it's quite difficult to remember the name of the destinations. They all look alike in my opinion. But who owns Hawaii? Everything begins with a monarchy under the reign of King Kamehameha and its descendants from 1810 to 1894. Land owners, Americans and capitalist Rapperen took control, making Hawaii a republic for four years until 1898. The archipelago then became an overseas territory of the United States. And finally, 61 years later, on August 21st of 1959, Hawaii officially became the United States 50th and last state so far. So yes, going to Hawaii is sort of going to Uncle Sam's country. Hawaii is the 4th smallest state, the 11th least populous, 
but the 13th with the highest density, with 85 people per square kilometer. And now, let's visit that famous Hawaii Island. You'll see soon enough that despite the fact that we are in the US, we feel very well the heritage of this wonderful island. The first thing you'll notice when you arrive, after that suffocating heat, oh yes, getting off the plane in Hawaii creates a bit the same effect as opening the door of an oven. Except that the heat doesn't go away. No kidding, it's very wet and very hot. But yes, the second thing that strikes after this heat wave is the smile, the living joy and the kindness of these people. We are really on another planet. Have you ever seen a lot of bus drivers smiling and happy to do their job? I saw some of them in Hawaii. Really, in every domain, people seem happy to do what they do. And they are zen. But zen. I don't know if it's an effect of the heat, but it seems that no one is in a hurry. Do you remember the scene at the licensing office in Zootopia? I felt a little like that a few times. Can I do? Well, I was hoping you could run a play for you. Well, I was hoping you could today. Well, I was hoping you could run a play for us. We are in a really big hurry. Sure. What's the plate? Two nine T number. And it's hardly not exaggerated. Oh yes, and for the language, don't worry about that. The Hawaiian language is still there, but everyone speaks English. With a few small differences. In Hawaii, rather than saying hi, they say holoa. It's so official that it's even their motto. The holoa state. You will also notice that many people say mahalo. That means thank you. Last but not the least in Hawaii, you do not wave your hand to people the same way. They do the shaka. It's so official that you can even find it as an emoticon. Geographically, Oahu impress with all its contrasts. You know me, I like mountains. On my first one, I was surprised to find myself on a volcano with such dry lands that it's forbidden to smoke. By the way, if you're a smoker, Hawaii is probably one of the worst places you can travel. I never seen so many smoking banners in one place. But I was expecting more tropical vegetation. At least, the humidity in the air at the airport, the palm trees, the banyan trees in the city gave me that impression. And I was right. Only 8 kilometers away from this volcano on the Pacific Rim in downtown Waikiki, yes, only 8 kilometers away from this arid environment lies a magnificent bamboo forest and huge trees all larger than the others. The kind of forest where vegetation grows on vegetation. Each plant tried to go higher than the others to gain sunlight. All that with a water stream, fed by this fall a little higher. On the other side of the island, there is also mountains with a mix of both vegetation. Probably the most impressive mountain range on the island, in my opinion. Very apical cliff of greenery as we see nowhere else. Other areas of the island are very flat and used for agriculture. In addition to coconuts, bananas and pineapple, there are also fields of coffee, sugarcane and macadam nuts. Or why not solar panel fields? Oh yeah, you can also find them on the roof of several houses. Not surprising when you are in a region of the world where it almost never rains. At least for summer. Let's change the subject. Beaches. Because you cannot go on Oahu without going on the beach. They are all around the island. From the crowded beach to the desert beach, through the rocky beach where you can watch the wave hit the shore. The beach at the edge of the forest where you can watch the crabs run away from danger. The beach for sunbathing. The beach for surfing. The beach surrounded by mountains. The night beach or the beach to go snorkeling and observe the underwater life. Even though it gave me a huge sunburn, it was my favorite. There is something for every taste. 
In fact, there is so much variety of climate and geography on Hawaii Island that the entire Lost series was shot on this island. The beach, the jungle, the valleys, the scene in town, the Sydney airport, the parts where they make us believe that it happens in Africa or Iraq or even in Korea. Every single scene of Lost were shot on the island of Oahu in the real Hawaii scenery. Yes, this temple exists for real in Hawaii. This is Valley of the Temple. Asian culture is that important on Oahu that this temple was created to serve as a funeral complex for Hawaiian Buddhist and Shinto residents. The population of the Hawaiian archipelago today is made of 37% Asian, 27% White, 23% Metis, 10% Hawaiian and 3% Black. This is also the place that remind me the most Japan. Japanese and Korean restaurants offer succulent dishes downtown. And that's logical, because when you look at the map, Hawaii is the closest to Asia, after Alaska. Which bring us to talk about food. And you will have some choices. Colorful lunches, cold soup, warm one, or even boiling hot. Asian fried, ramen, pokeball, the best garnished nachos in the world, or this plate of chicken and shrimp, served with very sweet pineapple, black beans, rice and the best plantains i eaten in my life. Let's finish with dessert. Why not a gelato? Shave ice? This cloud texture sludge? Or why not the best cheesecake in the world? Are these donuts? I made a lot of friends that day. Oahu is a restaurant paradise. Hawaii is a great destination to please your taste buds. But, since nothing is perfect, and I made myself a duty to postpone the least enchanting point of each place, it's not to be annoying, it's only to share my point of view and be constructive. So the point that shocked me the most is the number of car on the island. Oh yes, there is a ton of car. And that's not normal for an island in the middle of the ocean. In Bermuda, for example, to drive a car, you must first be a resident and have a Bermuda license. So if you're a tourist, forget it, you're not allowed to drive. And for a resident, there is a limit of one vehicle per household. So a family of five living under the same roof cannot have two cars. And several countries around the world charge a ridiculously high tax rate on the purchase of a vehicle to discourage people from using the road. But Hawaii is part of the United States. And in that country, the population has been educated that way. The car is the best way of transportation. And if you want to live in the dream, you need a big car. They're brand new, built for a big car with big car comfort and big car features. Now here's the rest of that important story. Something really big in the way of news for 1941. The grandest ride ever engineered into a Ford car. An entirely new sensation. A ride that combines smoothness, level riding, and comfort. It's the result of basic improvements in the new Ford cars. So have the same mentality on an island of 1,542 square kilometers than on the lands of the third most land area country in the world, I noticed that it gives not really good results. There is virtually no space to park and the streets are congested. I thought about renting a scooter would be easier, but finally no, because I was told by some resident that many parts of the island are not accessible without going on the highways, which are prohibited to scooters. I think it is possible to get everywhere by taking great detour, but that's what population told me. So we use the bus. But as Oahu is an island, and there is not enough room to make a reserve lane for public vehicle, in addition to stop at every corner of the street to catch people, buses are also coughing traffic. So much that, as I was saying, a big flaw here is the amount of vehicle and that there is nothing that is done to encourage public transport. Right now, we just got off the bus because it's faster on foot. And that's a shame. 
because a little 44 km ride will take more than a hour and a half by bus if you're lucky with the transfer and without calculating the waiting time of several regions where a single bus passes every hour. So the biggest negative point about Oahu is the transportation. Then you'll not realize it in the great tourist area because the government is continually chasing them from these sectors. But there is a large population of homeless people. More than 4,000 people have no roof to sleep at night on the Oahu Island only. They can be seen very easily when you leave the most known areas. Some settle on the beach, some in parking lots, and in some area, sidewalk literally serve as a homeless camping. Which bring me to the last negative point. Waikiki is a really clean area of the island, but really, really clean. You could heat on the ground almost anywhere. City employees clean the street constantly by collecting all the waste and even the dead leaves. Everything is perfectly clean, but unfortunately, we cannot say the same about the rest of the island. In some areas, homeless people leave their garbage when they leave a place. Elsewhere, it's the ocean that brings the trash of the world. Hawaii lies directly on the road of a waste highway between two plastic islands of the Pacific Ocean. Have you heard of these famous plastic islands on the ocean? It's not just a legend, they really exist. Do some research on Kamelo Beach. It's a beach on Big Island, it will give you a good idea. So many beaches in Hawaii get waste from around the world directly on the shore thanks to the ocean. If you still use plastic bag to make your grocery, if you still buy a bottle of water, if you go get your coffee in a cup that you throw every day, if you pack your sandwich in a Ziploc bag that you throw at the end of the day, or that if you simply not have yet paid attention to the amount of plastic you use, it is high time you get started. The vast majority of the plastic is not recycled, so do not think because you put your peanut butter jar in the recycling, that it will necessarily end up being recycled. If you use single-use plastic, you are partly responsible for that. I am myself part of the cause, but if I allow myself to speak to you about it, it's because I pay more and more attention to it. Finally, if we return to Oahu, it's really a beautiful place that I highly recommend to visit. There is something for every taste. And I'm not just talking about food. Come discover its jungle and mountains. Or swim with fishes. Come surf or swim with friends. Admire the beauty of the beach and have fun on the street at night. Come discover the Aloha lifestyle of Oahu. Finally, I'll leave you on some images of this majestic island. And if you wish to visit it, I invite you to come and see my guide, who will be available right there, if it's not already. <laughs>